spent my whole damn life in the city. Anywhere I go, DC's coming with me. I spent my whole damn life in the city. I can go for broke, but the capital is in me. I spent my whole damn life in the city. Anywhere I go, DC's coming with me. I spent my whole damn life in the city. I can go for broke, but the capital is in me. Welcome, everyone, to District Divided, a DC sports podcast. More specifically, a Washington Commanders podcast. I am Amit. That is KDOT. Today's episode, we're talking very quickly about Jason Wright. He is no longer going to be the team president, but he is staying with the team in a senior advisor role through the end of the season. So we're going to talk about that. And then the rookies reported to training camp yesterday. We're finally at training camp, and we are going to quickly go through who the rookies are. And we're going to make some predictions on some of the rookies as well. So that's the episode today. And if you like the video, please, well, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, comment as you always do. Got a comment mailbag today. And Kada? I'm disappointed. Now, I get it. As you told me that um, I guess the algorithm doesn't necessarily know what to do with the keyword side piece. But... (laughs) Subscribers, guys, like, there's no reason Dish Divider should have less views than it has subscribers. Remember, we are on the road to a million. Having 200 views on anything is a fucking embarrassment. It's embarrassing. It makes me hurt inside. You got to share this shit, guys. This is all I got. <laughs> I'm holding on to it, man. Don't, 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 don't leave me out here in the cold. I, I need this. Share it. <laughs> share this shit please you are actively killing k dot when you don't so we're just gonna keep it a buck with you today why don't we go ahead and let's talk about jason wright and share this shit while you're at it please so jason wright once again he is moving out of his role as commander's team president okay and that's going to be that's immediate Uh, But he will be leaving at the end of the coming NFL season. In the meanwhile, he's going to be a senior advisor. He released a statement, which honestly, as I read through, was quite quite a a roller coaster. Yeah, I can. You know what? Honestly, fuck it. Let me quickly read it because it was interesting. So here is the statement. I am incredibly proud of what we have accomplished over the past four years. Together with an amazing team of professionals, we have taken this franchise through a period of immense challenge and uncertainty and have transformed it. We've set the table for an incredibly bright future under Josh's leadership. Over just the past year, we've welcomed record numbers of fans back into our building, made meaningful improvements to the fan experience, re-engaged with corporate partners, and reconnected with the community. Most importantly, we re-established a culture of respect in this organization. Sounds like he's leaving. Given all those accomplishments, that's why I'm proud to announce that I will remain with the team throughout the 2024-2025 season with the same responsibilities. Okay, not leaving, same responsibilities. In particular, I look forward to helping the organization complete its new stadium deal. This feels like the right moment for me to explore my next leadership opportunity. Wait, is he leaving? I'm extremely grateful to my commander's colleagues, our fans, and this community for all that we have accomplished these past four years, and I'm looking forward to the start of a very successful season for the Burgundy and Gold. That was the statement from Jason Wright. KDOT, your reaction hilarious <laughs> so like look jason wright is a walking linkedin page right like this is what he you look at like where he came from the care in the organization all kind of shit all right what i find hilarious is that like i think this this statement itself accomplishes quite a few things number one one of the big question marks this entire offseason has sort of been from a lot you go on twitter you want any of the forums it's what's happening with jason wright is jason wright still here is this uh, jason wright this at least answers some of that. He's here for now, okay? He's here for now, and then he's going to go on and do whatever it is that he's doing next. I find it hilarious that, like, look, back up. There are a lot of fans that are still highly upset about Jason Wright, highly upset with Jason Wright about a lot of things that happened during his tenure, right? I know a lot of people will point to, like, the Sean Taylor Memorial. Um, look, I, I sort of relented on that because the family has said enough to come out and, like, they did final approval on whatever, so I'm going to leave that alone, right? But still the rollout that day, the pictures there, the porta potties, all the rest of the shit, somebody got to take responsibility for that. Then if you look beyond that, the rollout of the name, the commander's name and everything was sloppy, messy, all kinds of shit, right? But 
when you think about those things, you also have to remember, guys, there was another guy in charge. There was another guy at the top of the pyramid that allowed still constant bullshit to rain through. You know that he still had his fingers involved in fucking, his hands involved in fucking everything. What I find hilarious about the statement, all the accomplishments that he's talking about, he talks about over the last year. He only gets into detail about the accomplishments over the past year when they had new ownership, right? So, like, the thing that Jason Wright has been doing is, like, we knew that he wasn't going to be as hands-on as he was during the Snyder administration. But during this particular regime, they've known that, like, all right, he's already got a head track as far as the stadium stuff. We're probably going to keep him on this. We'll keep him on some of the other business stuff. And he'll continue doing that. I don't think anybody was looking at him as team president, the end-all, be-all, to any decision that was happening there in Ashburn. I doubt it. I don't think anybody really believes that. I just think that he is the he's the face. He's the puppet. He, it sucks. I don't want to call the man uh, proud, educate, w- awesome black man a puppet. But when you work for this organization, especially on the side, that's all the fuck you can be, right? Like, mm-hmm. it, 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 there's a cap. And I think that he's done the best that he could do under this new regime. And like, as you said, you can look through all those things. I think that this franchise is in a much brighter situation than it was when he first got here. And I'm willing to bet that he has something to do with that. So I'm going to give him his kudos and good luck going to manage whatever the fuck it is he wants to go manage in a year from now. Right. I I think that's pretty well said. For me, Jason Wright was put into an impossible situation, to your point. Could he have done better in certain moments? Of course, but who couldn't? So like... It is one of those things where anyone under Dan Snyder, we call Yapich on this program here, anyone under him was put in that impossible spot. I think all things considered, he was willing to be more transparent with things. I do have questions about the rebrand, right? Saying it's going to be a very collaborative process and ending up with Commanders when when you look at social media, it looked very obvious that Commanders was not a name that people liked. So that one I do have questions about. But in terms of other stuff, he did engage with fans. He did it via social media. He did try and trot some stuff out. So I appreciate the efforts. I'm glad he's still going to be with us until the end of the season and do wish him the best of luck with whatever he chooses to do after this. I just remember reading the statement at first and be like, wait, what the fuck is going on? Uh, and getting a little kick out of it. But yeah, best of luck to Jason Wright moving forward. And thank you for all that you have done so far. It does potentially open the door to another rebrand KDOT. And we will have a new team president. We can float some names out later. But anyway, this is just the immediate reaction to it. Any final thoughts before we talk about the rookies? I will say that what I what I have a pre I think that a lot of the fans are sort of like, like, can we just get rid of anything that had to do with the Snyder? Can we just get rid of it? Um, but I also think that like once again, Yacht Bitch is a cancer. He's a cancer of a fucking team or any organization. I do appreciate that they are allowing some guys to kind of stick around if they can contribute to maybe get some of the stank off of them because they don't Mm -hmm. deserve it. Yeah. And here's the thing at any company, you can have horrible leadership, but still some really, really good employees or competent employees at the very least, right. Right. That help you with the transition. And some of them actually stick around for quite some time too. I mean, my side piece team last season is Giro Evero defensive coordinator. He stuck around qualified man. Okay. Look out for the Carolina Panthers this coming season. Okay. You want to move on to the rookies? please. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Needed to squeeze that in there where I could. So the rookies reported to training camp yesterday, which is obviously a very exciting time. We've had other teams already report. For example, the Chicago Bears did. And then you saw Caleb Williams get his deal done because you need to have your rookie deal in place before you can even practice and participate in training camp. We reported yesterday. If we could quickly run through the picks once again, KDOT, just to quickly recap. Um, yeah, of course. Do you want the full list or are you want one by one? We can go one by one to begin and then we'll go to the full list. So, Sounds of course, pick. round one pick two. We've got Jaden Daniels. And then we had a few second round picks. We went Johnny Newton round two pick 36. Moving on, we got Mike Sainer still slot corner out of Michigan. Then we go with the Senator Ben Sinnott, tight end out of Kansas State. Moving to the third round, high hopes for this kid. Brandon Coleman, left tackle out of TCU. We go over to Luke McCaffrey, pick 100 in the third round. Christian's brother, of course. We got Jordan McGee, linebacker out of Temple, who we have high hopes for. Dominique Hampton, some people have compared him to Sean Taylor in terms of hitting safety out of Washington. Javante Jean-Baptiste, edge rusher out of Notre Dame. So those were the draft picks. And now if we were to look through 
the list as a whole, please, that you go. That is going to be your draft class. Once again, it's Jaden, Johnny, Mike, Ben, Brandon, Luke, Jordan, Dominique, Javante, Jean-Baptiste. Those are the draft picks. Um, and then actually, KDOT, if we can just yeah. go ahead. I know you've got the list of the other guys as well. This will include the undrafted free agents. Thank you so much for putting this together. Two-parter. Here we go. Sam Hartman, Austin Jones, A.J. Woods, Norrell Pollard, Tyler Owens, Chigozi Anasim, corner out of Colorado State. We got Michael Wiley, Bo Bauer, Ben Nickel, Marcus Rosemi, Jack Saint, and David, oh my gosh, David Nwaguku. I, I greatly Racist. for that. Oh my goodness, I was not prepared. You know what's funny is I have a spreadsheet and I marked who the rookies were and we're going through this and I forgot to mark him as a rookie and I was like, wait a minute, why is that name surprising me right now? But Your yeah. spreadsheet literally probably David African name. <laughs> you, you can- <laughs> David, no can do. No, <laughs> no listen, I, it was, I apologize. I apologize. I'll get that right for the next episode. Um, but we'll anyway. make the team. <laughs> hey, listen, we keep talking about how weak the O line is. Maybe he does. Maybe he does. Maybe he turns Maybe up. Maybe we'll learn it. <laughs> but anyway, those, those are the rookies. Those are the rookies we ended on. I have a note there. Um, but K oh. dot the, the question to you is if you could name one or two that you're looking out for this coming training camp that you think could stand out that you think will stand out. And you think maybe is a dark horse to be able to stand out. Who, who are some names you're looking at? Yeah. JJ McCarthy. So like in Minnesota, the camp, <laughs> <laughs> this man will not let it go by the way. Go ahead. I can't. All right. So yeah, I mean, uh, of course hasn't signed his rookie deal. Just adds up. Jay Daniels. We all know what we're looking for there. Right? Like I, as a matter of fact, if we're looking at anything, as far as the rookies, I'm hoping I see him struggle a bit more so we can see more of somebody else. Okay. I want to see more Mariota. That's what I want to see in training camp. But the uh and maybe, maybe some of my guy. Maybe I need to see some of them. <laughs> Neither of those things will happen. So <laughs> let's so all right, but I'm not gonna pick Jaden. I think Jaden's a boring pick. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think Everybody knows probably where I'm going because he's my favorite guy that we drafted, and it's a dude that I was really, really high on throughout every one of the draft things, which is Ben Sennett. The Senate. The Senate. So, love this dude. Now, look, I did something that I, I think I should have done a while ago, which was the look at Cliff Kingsbury's offenses and how tight ends have performed in the over time, and I will tell you, did look great. <laughs> I think it took me to like year three before I found a tight end to like crash the 400 yard mark. But also, if you're looking from a talent standpoint, I don't think that the guys that they had there in Arizona from a tight end standpoint until they got Zach Ertz years after is comparable to what I think the talent is that we have here on the roster. Zach Ertz, once again, that guy, that guy gets named immediately, right? But mm-hmm. I think the the thing with me as far as Senate is like I'm really high on him as far as that being the the that the, the jack of all trades sort of guy. Um, I just want to see and want to hear that he's doing or pulling off plays. I want to hear about playmaking abilities. You look at the tight end position here in Washington and you see about Zach Ertz, but you know you have a John Bates, you know you have an Amari Rogers. It's a crowded room. And a lot of times you got rookies coming into a crowded room, unless their physical abilities just kind of leap. Be way beyond anything, it's going to take them time to kind of get enveloped in the offense. You know, a lot of tight ends have a slow roll before they, they rarely do you see them guys like just come into the league and fucking like, just go off. Even the guys that end up having rookie, uh, like monster rookie seasons, like your Sam Porters, those he didn't start on fire, right? Like it was a few weeks, they start getting them more involved, and it's like, oh, I guess we could start. He this did, guy. He, to be fair, did have a nice opener against Kansas. Oh, no, he did, he did, he did. But, but they, outside it, of that, you're right, it just takes some time. Right. Yes, yes, yeah. point proven. So, the, the, the thing with Ben for me is like, I this is a guy that I'm rooting for really hard because I believe in him, I believe in his playmaking abilities. I believe that, like, it's that Chris Cooliness of it, which is like you get this goofy white boy running down the field that looks uncoordinated, but he's just making shit happen. Like, I love Chris. He would just do the thing in his feet and just be hitting side to side. And we should be like, ah, this is who Ben is. And I just want to see him thrive because I think he's a guy. And if you put the ball in his hands, good things will happen. So I'm I'm feeling good about it. I have confidence in it. And I'm I, this one of those names where if you're on Twitter or whatever, you're like, yo, Ben Sonny, he had a hell of a catch. You know? 
Dude, he blew up. He he blew up Bobby Wagner on a block. Like that's what I want to hear. And that's and, and if I could add to your point on Ben Sinnott, he was initially recruited as a fullback, by the right. way, to to Kansas State, and then led the team in receiving yards and touchdowns. So all of a sudden, we're in a tight end conversation. The guy is very, very versatile. I don't know that we have anybody else on the roster that is able to do what he is able to do. And he's just a rookie, right? right. So taking him 53 overall, you can see that there are going to be high hopes for him as he develops. Now they got a Kyle Juszczyk over in San Francisco. Adam Peters comes from San Francisco. They got a George Kittle in San Francisco where they line him up all over the place. Ben Sinnott is expected to take on that role. So he is already known for his blocking. He's known for having pretty good hands, and we'll see how he develops in this offense. But just to uh, put the exclamation point on KDOT's point for the excitement behind the senator over here, um, plenty of reason for it. Please continue. Um, the next pick was going to be Mike Sanders still, but I'm gonna I'm not gonna do that. So like the okay. um uh, the only reason being that I think something that I've always gone back to is like to me, my favorite corners of the corners that really speak out are the ones that don't really make the news, right? Because if mm. they're doing a great job, it's just yeah, nothing happened here. So, like, that's – I think, like, him – you might hear some good leadership stories. That's my main hearing, but I don't I, I don't know if I'm going to hear a whole bunch of stuff as far as on the field, right? Uh, so, I am going to go with – um. holy shit, am I racist? The other white boy, Luke McCaffrey! <laughs> so, like – um. now, if this Brandon Ayuk shit could just die – not him. The story connected to Washington could just fucking disappear. The big thing for me with Jaden Daniels this entire offseason has been about the connections he's had with Luke McCaffrey, right? So, like, those are the guys that are showing up every day earlier than anybody else. Those are the guys that have been working out away from the team together constantly, right? They've already sort of built that connection. And I think Luke is one of those dudes that should – if you're a sure-handed guy, which is what he seems to be, even being new to the position overall, right, to be that sure-handed dude means to me is something that, like, in training camp, that's stuff that leaps off the page a bit. Mm -hmm. That's the stuff that, like, when you're watching training camp, you're like, dude, it's automatic. Like, when I hear, I, I, I'm expecting those words. Dude, Jaden Luke is automatic. Like, that's, that's something that'll get me, like, really, 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 really fired up. Because if, like, he can get that connection going for what I assume will be more of the slot receiver than anything else in mm -hmm. regard to what Luke is doing, that means that Jaden Daniels, rookie quarterback, has got his safety valve working great. So he could take his shots to do whatever, but it means that, like, at any given point in time, if the going gets tough, going gets rough, he can look for Luke. He look for that white boy. And and now that's uh, – nail. Uh, that, 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 that's what I'm – I the just floor think – You doing on the floor? Okay, I'll take over. Uh, just real quick, uh, Luke McCaffrey, just a couple notes on him. Initially uh, brought in to be quarterback over in Nebraska. Okay, so there is some connection over there where he goes, you know what, I want to play over there. Tried for a couple of years, and it was fine. Uh, but then he ends up going to Rice. He plays a year of quarterback over at Rice and then finally switches over to receiver. So his final two years, he's playing wide receiver. He does have hey, a... Hey, 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 one second. I'm sorry. Um, did you say Nebraska? I said Nebraska. Reminds me of something. 51 days, bitches! Oh, my goodness. So, uh, and we got to pull the buck tooth bandit. <laughs> Shout out Will Compton. Um, I got to say, I was thinking about people that wore 51. For whatever reason in my head, I had 57. So I was sweating this one. Thankfully, it was Will Compton, and I was just wrong this whole time. Again, I was about to clown me. For yeah, like former time. team captain. Will Compton. I honestly had no recollection that he was a team captain, to be totally honest. So apologies to all of you listening. Uh, but on Luke McCaffrey, back to him. Two uh, years at wide receiver, and he was really, really productive in them. He, I think, was either first or tied for second in contested catches across all of college football. Yeah. Now, it, now, he did have eight drops, but I, I didn't watch every single snap at Rice. I imagine some of it might have been off of a contested ball. Right. You know, so like, rice. yeah, there you go. And right. so, and that's a fun thing with Luke as well. If you want to have a couple gadget plays, you could probably throw for you, you know? So just something to look out for as well throughout the season is that Luke maybe throws a bomb down the field to somebody who knows, I don't know, but it's, he's obviously a very exciting pick. Like K dot had mentioned, 
Jaden and Luke have been getting in at, I believe the time is 545, at least beforehand. That's yeah. what they were doing. They're getting along very well from the sounds of it. And that's exactly what you want. It also leads to typically your camp battle at the same position. I'm very, very excited for when offense plays defense. And we got Luke McCaffrey against my first guy who's going to be Mike Sanders still because he is supposed to be the slot corner, right? So if yeah, they're playing right. man to man, you got these two going against each other. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Here's why. So similar to Luke McCaffrey, Mike Sanders still also switched positions and he played two years of corner over at Michigan, played a bit in high school as well, but played over at Michigan. And boy, was he good from the jump. I mean, so initially he's honorable all mention for the Big Ten his junior year ends up playing very, very well and then takes a leap. And he's a captain twice, by the way. I mean, the guy is his senior year, KDOT, 12 pass breakups, six interceptions, two forced fumbles and two sacks. That's good enough for first team all Americans. Somehow only good enough for second team all Big Ten, which I found quite strange. But first team all American, second team all Big Ten. But the guy was stellar at corner. A couple pick sixes as well. A captain for one year, excuse me, not the two. But everyone voted him team MVP for that number one defense that they had under Jesse Minter over there at Michigan. The guy can play. He's a little undersized, which I think scared people off of draft boards. We were running to the podium with that pick. I'm so excited to see Mike Sanders still against Luke McCaffrey come camp time. I think it's going to be great. Oh, no, no doubt. It's my, my hope in this regard is Luke McCaffrey, like 100% catch percentage, yeah. like no yak. <laughs> like, yeah, like Mike is just no in there. I yeah. just want him. And yeah. it's like, but it's like the Jaden Luke connection works. It's just against Mike, you ain't getting nothing. You ain't getting nothing big. Yeah. I think that would be, I think it'd be cool just even an incompletion. So long as the ball is placed properly and Mike is getting up there and getting in his face and they're yakking at each other. Oh my goodness. So I'm it, very much looking forward to that. Them just beating, beating up on each other. Like that, like yeah. the, to, to me to have the two young guys that talented battling each other in camp, it just strengthens the team, man. Like that's, that's all it does. It just makes us better. Yeah. No, absolutely. I wanted to also highlight a couple other people on defense, KDOT, because mm -hmm. the thing about last year's defense, guys, I don't know if you know this, pretty bad, um, but here's how bad it was. We allowed 30 and a half points per game on defense. That was the worst across the NFL since 2020. Okay? So three seasons worth of shit is what that defense was last season. Now, of course, we got Dan Quinn in here, defensive-minded head coach. We've got Joe Witt Jr., defensive coordinator, who's done well everywhere he's gone. So there is excitement just from the coaching standpoint, but I think the players as well. Jordan McGee, fifth-round pick, we had talked about him very briefly over at Temple, led the team in tackles for two seasons. He was a two, he was a two-time captain. And playing behind a guy like Bobby Wagner, who is a bit of a, I guess you could say undersized because six foot two forty. Jordan McGee's 6'1", 230. So, like, the measurables are basically the same. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious to see how he learns behind a Bobby Wagner. Some people think he's going to be a better weak side linebacker instead of middle linebacker, but I'm very curious to see how Jordan McGee does in camp because, and if I remember correctly from one of the commander's logs, he was a caucus pick. So I think someone really yeah. batted for Jordan McGee to be in the building. Okay. So I'm curious to see what they see in him during camp. But what do you think of Jordan McGee kid? No, I mean, he was one of the names that got mentioned. Some of the mini camp stuff was like, Hey, keep an eye on that guy. Um, and I think that the, it, it's to be expected to a certain degree. I think the Bobby Wagner connection is that from everything that I've understand about Bobby, he's going to take some guys under his wing. There's going to be uh there's going to be a true mentorship sort of role that Bobby has with some of those guys. He's a team leader, of course, but you're going to see some guys like legit try to emulate what Bobby is doing. And if you work your ass off, which is the other thing that Jordan McGee has is like, if you look at his tape, the dude just tries mm -hmm. like that. Th that's the thing that makes him most excited. We talk about what makes a commander, right? You look at his tape. There's no question. Like you, you see it right there. What it is that the team has talked about it. And if you have that level of enthusiasm going into it and you have somebody that you can model what it is you need to do, after Bobby Wagner, I mean, it's literally at that point, it's just like if, if you're bringing everything you're supposed to bring mentally to it, it's just what can your body do? And as you said, from a physicality standpoint, it's pretty similar to, some, to a really great guy. So, like, 
let's let's roll. Let's fucking do it. Like, and the idea that you have a guy like him with the linebacker group, they're like, look, if I'm looking at defense, of course, there are a couple of the defensive rookies that I'm excited about, but I'm much more excited about some of the guys that we signed in free agency of course. and how it is they're going to interact or doing the defense. But the idea that you can have a Bobby Wagner teach a Jordan McGee, I can already see it now, 15, 20 years from now, when his career is all over, and Jordan McGee saw him going to the Hall of Fame, and he's, I'd like Bobby Wagner to give me, to do the introductory speech for the Hall of Fame. You know why? Because he was integral in my rookie season on making me know and making me the mold of the player that I've become. Fucking great job. And then both of them with the gold jackets on. And that, oh, that it would be a beautiful day. It would be a beautiful day. And, and just as a friendly reminder, Bobby Wagner is here on a one-year, $8.5 million deal, so not necessarily back next season. We hope that he ends up playing well enough and is a mentor enough to people that he wants to stay, that the chemistry is there, and we are able to keep Bobby for a while. But it could just end be up done. being the one. Yeah, it could just be the one and done. And so then all of a sudden. I mean, career-wise, he might just wrap it up. It's possible. And yeah. so then what's next? Could be Jamin. It could. I'm curious to see if he starts rushing more. But you got Jordan McGee right here. Again, two-time captain. Led the team in tackles for the past two seasons over at Temple. Yep. Seems like a guy that could do that. Now, one more player I wanted to mention. A bit of a dark horse candidate, Kate. I'm curious as to your thoughts is Bo Bauer. Matthew Bo Bauer out of Notre Dame. I he, thought you were going to name the African guy you can't name. Well, well, <laughs> no, well, you know what? If I if I had a little more time to research him, if I had just flagged him as a rookie, maybe I would have, okay? Because the offensive line does need work, of course. But Bo Bauer um, is a rookie this year, mm -hmm. but he last played 2022. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's that's important to note. But he is a middle linebacker and was absolutely adored over at Notre Dame where he played and what ends up happening to him is he ends up getting hurt in practice tears multiple ligaments okay so he ends up rehabbing during the draft process goes to seattle briefly but he's still recovering from the knee injury so he doesn't get a proper chance but yeah. here's what we do know about him is that during that time off he worked on his long snapping now that's important to me because we've got tyler Ott, which is great but when we talk about special teams and how He's gone now. How unfortunately bad Cameron Cheeseman was like, you can never have too many guys that are going to be versatile to be able to fill in if necessary. So that's one. So he's worked on his long snapping and two, his own special teams coordinator called him a demon on special teams. And apparently this guy is a game changer as a gunner, as somebody that comes down and can make a big hit on a kickoff, on a punt return, whatever. I think this guy is probably so I'm fascinated by a story. K dot. So I think that someone this hungry, this determined to be able to make the team willing to long snap and learn that excellent on special teams and also is able to play middle linebacker. Very curious to see how he looks, that drive and determination. They all have it, of course. But with that in mind, I haven't played in a year. I really need to hit the ground running. I'm curious to see what he looks like. Yeah, I think I, if I'm not mistaken, I think I did go a little long on Bo Bear, uh, like right after the draft. You did, because uh, yeah. uh, he's also part of that all hair team, which I got rid of the yes. video. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> of tremendous locks. Um, no, this dude to me, everything that I read about him and like looking, and you could find some like old interviews with him um, when he's in college, and this dude to me, when I'm looking at it, he seems like the Larry Izzo dream special. Yeah, um, it just feels as though and th that's something that I always felt was like, while kicking shouldn't exist in football, um, while it does, you need to make sure that you put something on it. Special teams should not be an afterthought. If you look at the franchise to really give a shit and the ones that sustain success, that's something that it's something that kind of leaps off. You can tell that they have guys that they give a shit. You look at those New England Patriots teams like the Matthew Slaters and the Larry Izzo's and the all the guys that they had to go through and it was like, yeah, this is what he's here for. This is his job. Like, uh, yeah, if somebody, if there's an injury that happens somewhere else and we need to slot him in, cool. But he's here for this responsibility and we give a shit about it. And this to me, Bo Bauer feels like one of those dudes. Um, he He's a dude that's just going to work his ass off. Um, and I, I love that. I love the dudes, the on the bubble guys, just like I face adversity my entire time. And I'm going to do everything in my power to do it to, to get to where I need to be. And the pressure's kind of off, right? Like, I mean, it, the, the pressure as far as keeping his career going might be on, but like the pressure to be 
a starting linebacker for the fucking commanders is not necessarily on the table, right? But it's right. like, yeah, it's a dude. I'm telling you, if you if you get an opportunity to start looking at some of his videos and stuff, or or looking at interviews for him, mm -hmm. you'll you'll see why he's a dude you should root for. Yeah, even though actually... no, fuck Notre Dame. Fair enough, and I agree with that. There are a lot of there are actually a lot of really cool stories as I was reading about these rookies, and yeah, it, it's fascinating. A lot of these stories, Bo's in particular, to me, just because he is trying to make it after what sounded like an absolutely brutal knee injury. So curious to see how he comes back. Go ahead. Shout out to uh, I always thought this was a mistake when Nick Sunberg got hurt, mm. and we signed Andrew East. Do you remember Andrew East? I don't remember Andrew East. Andrew East was the dude that came in. Um, he's probably more well known as Sean Johnson's husband. But I loved when he was here. It's another dude that I rooted for like some bitch. They should have never cut him. They went to cheese, man, and all went to shit. It should have been Andrew East and Sean Johnson is like the first, the 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 the, the, the royal couple of the commanders. I would have loved that shit. Just yeah. saying, it was a missed opportunity. Okay, missed opportunity there. Well, let's talk about some of the predictions, KDOT, we have for these rookies. So I'm going to go ahead and hand the floor over to you. There you go. And um, and see what you think for – and you can pick any of the rookies. You can pick the ones we earmarked, or you can just go ahead and pick any of them because I'm going to pick one we didn't. So go ahead. All right, so I think looking at the numbers as far as – I'm, I'm going to stick with the guys that I picked. Okay. Um, Because offense numbers – here we go. So Ben said, now I will 100% say that looking at the numbers of the Cliff Kingsbury uh, tight ends early on did not give me a whole lot of confidence the numbers are going to scream out. But I also think that Cliff Kingsbury's offense is going to look quite different than what it did look like in Arizona. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of other coaches here. You can talk about your Anthony Lynn's things like that. Um, but I also think because of Ben Sennett and the fact that he is that like um, Swiss Army knife, they're not necessarily looking for him to have the crazy numbers as much as he's contributing across all factors when it comes to the team. But if I were to like, just make a guess, right. I think Ben Senate might finish the year with some that's better than the most of the uh, rookies or the tight ends that they've had in Arizona. If he can get to about 400 yards, let's say 450. That's a solid like, year, man. 450. And let's say five touchdowns. Ooh, that's an amazing year. <laughs> and I think that that will be that. I think those numbers come later and Ben Senate ends up being the top five tight end in the fucking league by year two. That's my prediction on the Saturday, motherfuckers. Now that is a prediction. Okay, that blows my mind out of the water. I'm I love high. That. I'm high. I'm high on bed. Hey, and you have been pre-draft as well. It's got to be stated and noted for people that are new to KDOT's love for the senator over there, Ben Sinnott. So 450 and five touchdowns is what you're predicting? Yes. That is awesome. Um, the person I'm going to predict for, first off, is starting – training camp on the NFI list, a non-football injury list, because he actually got hurt in college. So you can do that. Um, okay. And that's Johnny Newton. I think Johnny Newton is going to be stellar the moment he steps onto the football field. He played the second half of last season at Illinois hurt. He also didn't even know he had a Jones fracture while he was playing and becoming a first team All-American. Didn't know. They found out after the season, like, by the way, you need surgery. Did you know that? And he's like, nope. All right, cool. Well, I'm going to get it and I'm going to be a superstar. He I think he's out of you. Mind that's already. correct that's but. correct you know and maybe another reason i fucking love the guy okay we get along on many levels uh johnny newton not only is he one of those players that has such brilliant technique because i was reading about his draft profile and stuff like that we got him prepped for this episode he so he uses the weight of his blockers against them because he's got multiple techniques and moves to be able to get to the quarterback which is awesome the guy never comes off the field, so I expect from an endurance standpoint, he's going to be fine because he's going to be rotating. My prediction is he blocks two kicks this coming season, whether it's an extra point or whether it's a field goal, whether they're both field goals. The man's a stud. He blocked four kicks last season, and he was playing hurt. So now I think he's going to, and he's always been better than everybody. Like That's always been the thing for him. He talked about wanting to baptize people that didn't draft him. I mean, listen, this guy is so focused and all he's doing is waiting to get on the field. But I expect him to have an instant impact, KDOT. I mean, Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, and then Johnny Newton, I think, pushes those two because they're going to see a hungry motherfucker that is willing to do whatever it takes to make a name for himself. And these guys are going to actually have to look out for their backs because they're going to go, holy cow, like we might get outshone by a rookie. I'm that high on Johnny Newton. So two block kicks, four or five sacks, 
this kid's going to be a star. I'm convinced. Absolutely convinced. I mean, I guess we're both going crazy. We're um, going, that's what it's about, baby. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you're right. The the I mean, that's the thing. Dan Quinn defense is rotations, right? Rotation, rotation, rotation. Get everybody a little. And that to me is always from a defensive line standpoint, there's nothing better than that. Like, it's there's nothing better than being able to like because the offensive linemen aren't rotating. So like the to be able to like come in and out of the game being like, oh man, I'm fresh. Oh, I'm about to baptize your bitch ass. Cause mm-hmm. that's just oh, oh, you had to do with Deron and John. Well, now you gotta do with me, motherfuckers. Like, hey, hey, no breaks, no breaks for you. Like, that's I love the opportunity of these dudes being fresh to yeah. go wreak havoc. I mean, dude, this guy, uh, uh, it, his numbers are shocking considering he was hurt and didn't really know. Like, I, that's that's the crazy part about him. Uh, you're making way too much sense now. I, I just I understand you so much more today. You do. You yeah. too. Maybe, maybe maybe we touch on that after the pod. Uh any final thoughts before we go to the comment mailbag? Any uh Jaden Daniels predictions? No, no, not okay. yet. Not I, yet. I'm on the but, same page as you, by the way. I'm not making any right now. But I also think that they're like they're not gonna tell us he's starting until no. like they're not gonna tell us who's the starter until after preseason, most likely. Um but it's a foregone conclusion, more or less, that he will be, based on what we're hearing. I I, I still have a little faith that they won't. Okay. Uh, I actually have more you... faith now than I did, let's say, during the mini camp. So that'll probably go away again once training camp and he's playing again. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Well, we'll see. And again, we'll next episode, we'll be able to talk about the on-field stuff, which I'm so excited for, KDOT. And by the way, Preseason is right around the corner. You know the Hall of Fame game is August 1st? Yeah, I'm already running promotions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. You probably are. Oh, my God. All right. I let's go ahead. Fucking soccer's over. Get to the comment mailbag. Honestly, international soccer, not as good as club soccer, obviously. So, But that's that's going to right over you, so don't worry about that. Let's go to the comment mailbag uh, where we have seven comments. And once again, that's my bad for putting a side piece in the title over there because I think we probably would have gotten more views if um, if I'd used like, you know, the Panthers, the Cardinals, the Falcons, the Chargers. If I throw I'm, I'm just annoyed with whatever you said about soccer just now. I don't know why, but it annoyed me. So I'm using this club soccer is better than international soccer. So you're saying like an inferior version of the game is better than the game? No, the club soccer is not the inferior version. The international soccer is the more popular one because it represents your country's represented and people will like take time thing. off and stuff like that. What's no. club soccer? Club soccer is just the teams, like the teams. yeah, it's like Arsenal, it's like Manchester, City. it's like Bayern Munich, it's like those teams. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Fuck it. Comment mailbag time, motherfuckers. District divided, ain't got time for no suckers. Spread the word, get in line. Oh, 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 geez, and new G's, it's your time. And spread the gospel, cause this shit is divine. Yeah. I don't know why I brought that shit up. Just made me angry. It was your fault. No, it's my fault. I'm not denying. It's my fault. It's my fault. Shout out. You gotta egg it on, but it's my fault. Go to the comment mailbag where we go to. Honestly, at this point, I think just a huge fan of yours, K. Dot Allison New G Lombard. Shout out. Wit Wiz all the way. Love your references, K. Dot. No. Ah! Your reaction besides that. No! <laughs> look, all right, fuck it. Right, God damn it. Um, look, I will start off. The Philadelphia cheesesteak, the traditional Philadelphia cheesesteak, with is with which is wit whiz, is an inferior sandwich to what I consider to be the steak and cheese. Now, if you're a Washingtonian, you know places like Trios or that you get like a good shaved ribeye with provolone and your grilled onions and your grilled mushrooms. It's a superior sandwich. So leaving to Philadelphia to fuck up a good thing. <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. That's the reaction from KDOT. <laughs> Shout out Allison Duji Lombard, who I believe that is the only comment. Yeah, that is the that is the only comment from Allison this week. Provolone, mushrooms, onions. We move over to... And an Amorosa roll! I was waiting for that part. We move over to Tony. Shout right. out, Tony. 
OG. OG. Panthers coach Dave Canales is a QB whisperer. See, see, he, Tony understands a little bit. There is more, though. I'm born and raised in PG County. My wife is from b and so is my side piece. When I first read that, I got, I got a puzzle kick out of that. When Washington misses the playoffs, I pull for the Ravens. They're in the AFC. There's only one conflict of interest during a rare 1v1 when the two teams play against each other. So Tony's side piece. Now, granted, they don't qualify because they had way more than seven wins last season. But his second team, when the commanders are probably sucking, is going to be the Baltimore Ravens. He probably has a lot of fun watching Lamar in that defense as well, KDOT. As a Baltimore resident, I will say this city loves their football team. And I will 100% say going to games at MT Bank Stadium is a lot better than going to games. Oh, it's a Bank blast. It, it is so fun. fun. Um, I will never truly root for the Ravens just because I feel that rivalry as far as being as close as we are. Um, but I like I think I, I think I said at least on the pod the other day, I am an Orioles fan now. Um yeah, you did I felt the need to pick at least one team. In the city, I'm have you seen? Did you see their draft picks? The Orioles' draft picks, they all yeah. look the same. It's the same white guy. We got a type. Move over to Slim Sleazy. Shout out Slim Sleazy. 5650 is the timestamp. The Warriors is a badass movie and will be a great name for the team. So, another point for K Dot there. Not only should we use three bottle chance, we should use a silhouette of Cochise as the logo, Afro and Feathers. Double exclamation point there. K-Dot, your reaction to that? Yeah. Yep, I, I have a piece of glass, but I, it, it wasn't making it sound. You were trying to. Yeah, I was trying. Uh, that's right. Where's HTTR Redskins? Where the fuck you at? You had homework, nigga. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> me. <laughs> 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 Oh man! Uh, well, no, he, he you, hasn't you done. He hasn't done his homework. That you was took, funny. You took, you took me out of it, man. It's like fucking. I feel like Booker T. <laughs> Got the fucking rest of them. I just we we do. You had homework. We do need the two second reaction of us both going. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it slip. But here's the thing: I felt uncomfortable letting it slip because I don't think I've ever said that word on the podcast. Yeah, but now yeah. I'm reflecting. I am who the fuck I am. You had homework, yes. nigga. That's all I've ever asked you to do, my guy. That's all I've ever asked you to do is HTTR Redskins does owe us. I don't see it here. I don't see it here, but we do need the answers to those questions. Slim Sleazy with the comment on the last one. Shout out Slim Sleazy. Forgetting Kate on his element, huh? Uh, we go over I, to... I bet I look just like Booker T in that guy. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the rewatch. I'm looking forward to the rewatch of this. I was scared I let it slip. At the, at the RT boss. <laughs> Shout out at the RT boss. <laughs> Comments mailbag. Would love to see you collab with other creators like Louis T, um, who is another very good creator. Man, we really need to get on it. I need to follow up with Nathan, actually. I think this episode was the one we were supposed to do together. Oh, and I just never followed up. So, Nathan, if you're watching, my apologies. Well, and we do need to. I've talked to Big Doug a little bit. I think he's down. Louis T, I've not spoken to yet, but I'm sure he'd be down. Um, and we needed to talk to Rio, Rio Robinson. I think would be a lot of fun. All sorts of creators. There are tons of creators that we can collab with. George Carmi as well. Like lots of guys that I think would be really fun to collab with. K dot. We're better than all of you. Um, the <laughs> no, but I'm sure we're gonna do another training camp episode because I actually want to expand the things I'm more excited about the training camp with some of these fucking rookies. Um, and yeah, I think that'd we'll be do great. Like one. Nathan or somebody to come on and we can. We get the hype thing going. Absolutely. We very much look forward to that. Do you immediately. imagine Nathan's reaction to me making the word slip? Like, do you imagine how uncomfortable he would be? To be fair, he <laughs> is in our house. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that would be guys, I'm not sure the sponsors want me here. I'm going to have That's true. <laughs> we, that would be a fun reaction, actually. Uh, especially, and I, once again, got to commend you. I thought you did an awesome job on Ref the District. Now, knowing. Isn't <laughs> that that's something that could have happened? Inside. That's what's that's what's y'all saw authentic me getting getting very afraid in real time to show it to you. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful moment. We go over to Earl Bruce. Shout out Earl Bruce and, and shout Earl. out again to RT boss for the uh idea of collaborating. That's on me yeah. to just reach out to people because you're right. I think it will be awesome as well. Um, shout out to <laughs> Bruce, another OG over here. Congrats on reaching your first thousand subs. And we will continue to as you guys share this shit, of course. Mm -hmm. I'm riding with the Chargers as my side piece. Good shout over there. That would have been KDOT's other choice. My confidence levels on a one to 10 scales is the uh, chips exercise, I believe. 
QB, seven. Running back, seven. Wide receiver, seven. Tight end, seven. So we got sevens across the board between mm-hmm. the quarterbacks and those skill positions. O-line, five. D-line, eight. Linebacker, nine. Strong safety, nine. Free safety, nine. Corner, five. Special teams, eight. Thanks for another great show. And we thoroughly appreciate that, Earl. Now, I am assessing the confidence levels over here. K-Dot, do you have an initial reaction to it as I rack my brain on how I feel about him? Nope, because I fucked it up in my head. I thought he was doing a confidence rating for the Chargers, so I'm lost. <laughs> it's pop. No. No, this is us. This I is think us. it's us. Yeah, so no, this like is halfway us. Through, I was like, no, because the offensive sense. line for the Chargers is better than a five. I know. When he, when he had like tight ends rated higher, I was like, Antonio Gates back? So I was like, like, Antonio Gates. So I, no, that's what, so sorry, man. I, I, I got lost in the sauce. Oh, well, okay. How about this? Linebacker nine, strong safety nine, free safety nine. How do you feel about that? Because I think those are linebacker. I can understand. Linebacker Some people even have us having the best unit right now, and we haven't even the two guys haven't played together yet, let alone wear a commander's uniform. So we'll see about that. But I get it. Strong safety and free safety nine. I think is a little high. At least for me, it's a little it's rich high. for my blood. What do you think? There are only three positions that should be vying for first place, and then there should be a gap, or there should be some tiers. So, like, defensive line, linebackers, and wide receivers. I have my order. You have your order, as we did the yeah. exercise. Yeah. But if you have anybody tied with one of those three units, redo the exercise. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Once again, it's a confidence faith thing, right? So, like, hey, we even said that we probably we, – we might have fucked it up a bit as far as not being more creative with the way that we did the numbers. So like, That's true. Know. That is true. Uh, We go over to Jess Anto. Shout out, Jess Anto. I'll be reading the comment this week. (laughs) Congratulations on the G. Only 11 kajillion to go. I swear I had a premonition that KDOT would read one of my comments. And bam, it happened in the weirdest fucking way possible. I'm pulling for the Cardinals this season. Their coach took the Sheagles heart with him to Arizona. I I like the Arizona call. The early schedule scared me. But I like the Arizona call as we continue with just, with just Anto's comment. I wanted to. Carolina. The heart, the heart yeah, wanted to. But the, the analytic side of me just went, hold on. There's something here over in Charlotte. Uh, the big news since the last video. Gold pants. They do look good with the burgundy jersey. Agreed. Out of all the changes to the uniforms, I like the Mate burgundy helmets. I would have liked to see the W on one side with the player's number on the other side of the helmet. A gold face mask would have looked better as well. The black jerseys are my favorite. Those are clean. I really like the black jerseys, Kate. I don't know about you. Yeah, no, I like them. Okay. The DC flag and commander patches are great and have a real military feel. The best part is the under and overscored nameplate. There's nothing else like it in the league. Jason Wright will be leaving the team. I thought he was a good ambassador for the team. Unfortunately, he had to be the face for an unwanted name change. Two cheap Sean Taylor tributes and a cheap new name rollout with a fake fan input process. I know it wasn't his fault. He was the deodorant for Snyder's bullshit. It's not his fault. It's not his fault. To you last week there, KDOT. Share this shit. Your reaction to Jess Santos' comment. Uh, Jess always is killing it. Um, the the Jason Wright thing, when, when, when you were reading that, it reminded me of something. Um, I remember when Barack Obama got elected in 08. It was kind of like, oh, you guys are giving the black guy the 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 the, the ship as it's sinking <laughs> with the financial crisis. So like, yeah, here you go, buddy. Like, we'll give it to you sure. here. Yeah. Looking back, Jason Wright got fucked. <laughs> like, he really did get kind of fucked. He was put in an impossible situation. Yeah, it's like, that's, trust me, there were some moments in the moment where it's like, dude, that's part of your job now. Your job, if you've accepted it, you know what it is. You have to be the lightning rod for some of our age. No, well, kudos mm-hmm. to you. But now that it's like in the rearview mirror, yeah, truly, thank you. Like, thank you, Jason. Yeah, no, absolutely. And again, I will, I will echo what I said, which is that no one's perfect. Were some mistakes made? Absolutely. But right. who wouldn't have made mistakes in that role right. under that leadership? I think he did just about the best he could. <laughs> I do think they're probably I would imagine there's a regret or two when it came to the rebrand of the team, because I think it was quite, you know, as transparent as he was, that process did not feel transparent, especially saying that the fans were going to be involved. It didn't feel like the fans were involved. Kate. 
Well, all right. So two things really quick. Um, sure. Number one, you remember I had always had this theory that uh, pat myself on the back. I was pretty on point during the whole email scandal, Dan Snyder kind of disappearing and the, like everything that was mm-hmm. happening behind the scenes as far as the shit. I feel like everything that did come to light, I was pretty fucking dead on since from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another part of my theory was that Jason Wright kind of behind the scenes was pulling some stuff, maybe with the league office's help or whatever, and trying to throw Dan Snyder under the bus to a certain degree. I do, I do, I still do believe that there's some nuggets there. I, a lot of things that are unsubstantiated, so I don't want to just throw shit out there. Because yeah. I know Yacht Bitch likes to sue. But then the other part for Jason is that, like, you can do certain things and like for an evil person and like um you're you're in the muck with them. I, I still think it's more of a stink. And I also say, like, if I'm a Fortune 500 company or somebody else looking for leadership, knowing that he still did what he needed to do, he didn't throw anybody under the bus, didn't blame anybody for anything, didn't unravel. It's kudos to him. He's a good fucking soldier. No, he is. Um, he's a good fucking soldier. No, I completely agree, KDOT, on the Jason Wright point there. And shout out Jess Santo again for the awesome comment. And I think the Cardinals are a very, very good shout because last year was a lot about their culture, in my opinion, and making sure that players were playing hard, that they were close in games. Kyler coming back when they had the injury guarantee, some people thought they just shut him down. Fuck that. He's playing. We want to see what we have. We want to win. They end up actually affecting the seeding by beating the Eagles in Philly. And so that team has a lot of good stuff going for them. I absolutely commend the pick from Jess Anto there with the Cardinals. Curious to see how they do. We go over to Be Well 4467 shout out with the final comment of the day. I had a side piece team once. I had a soft spot and would pull for the Raiders. Then they destroyed us in the Super Bowl. I was in high school. Broke my heart. Have never had a side piece team since. That is the comment, KDOT, your reaction. Shannon Dan Fall for choosing the Raiders. The fuck are you thinking? Um, I just, unrelated, but we're we used to do all Washington sports, but I just got a, a text from um Monsieur X. Oh, yes. In two games, 58 minutes, Alexander Star stats one for 21. Yeah, he, he's been having a bit <laughs> of a rough shooting day. Uh shooting summer league. Yeah, hey, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm gonna say this as we conclude the common mailbag. Trade for Bronny. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm high. I'm high on Alex Star. And I want to summer, be league, too. summer league, you can tell that the Wizards coaching staff and the G everybody, they know it's about the future. And they're saying, let them do what they want to do. And let's figure out, we'll put it all on tape and we'll figure out what to work with them on. That's it. And I think they're allowing Star to shoot from distance, which a lot of fans are like, don't do that. Get down low, like stuff like that. Understood. But let them show you their tendencies so that you know what to coach. It's clearly part of a process. I'm glad we're finally committing to being bad and investing in the future. So I'm good with it. But in the meanwhile, yeah, it, it is a tough look. With sorry, right. going one for 21 in summer league. In the I last wish there games. was a Baltimore basketball team I could record. All right, what's up? Be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the common mailbag. This was District of Added, a DC sports podcast. More specifically, a Washington Commanders podcast sprinkled in with the little wizards at the end. I am of it. That is KDOT. Thank you guys for listening to this episode where we talked about Jason Wright leaving the team at the end of the season, becoming a senior advisor for this coming season, and some of the rookies to look out for and some of the predictions behind the rookies. Uh, Thank you for listening. And if you enjoyed the episode, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, comment as you always do, and KDOT. Don't make me cry. Don't make me cry. Share this shit. Please. Okay. KDOT needs this. I need this too. But KDOT like really needs this. Okay. After the pod begins right now. All right, KDOT. Floor is yours. I, I feel like we had a couple. couple. Yeah. I'm gonna, uh, let's. Um, let's. All right. So mind over matter. I guess. Yes. Be the thing let's, let's do it. Let's do it. So. Please explain to the listening audience what you told me about, like, um, your theory about having things to do compared to. Oh, C- OK. 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 Yeah, yeah, I can do that. All right. So so before this episode, KDOT and I were talking, we were like, hey, how are you doing? We, we check in on each other before the episode and uh, and warm up a little bit. And so 
I was telling him that I've had this cough that just get well curtain all the way back. I had a root canal last Monday and then I got sick on Tuesday. It was like a it was a genuine sickness, to be clear. Like it was some sort of infection for sure. Um, but the cough has continued to linger and it's been very, very annoying. And so what I told KDOT was that once I'm able to get back in the swing of things like training camp starts, for example, that's something for us to do and focus on uh, for these episodes. When soccer is continuously happening this past week, games got canceled because of either heat, as you would know, in the D.C. area or really anywhere um, in the D.C. area, as well as like some thunderstorms. Once I get back into the regular routine swing of things where I'm focused on other stuff, this sickness is just going to go away. And what I cited was going to the gym and being on the treadmill, for example, and then noticing that all of a sudden I was able to breathe very easily again, whereas otherwise I'd be stuffed up. Once I'm on the treadmill, my mind is like, oh, shit, like he needs to be able to breathe. Let's give him full range of oxygen with the nose again. So that's that's where that came from. And that is the preface to now what KDOT wants to talk about. Um. I think everybody, we've, we've heard about it. We know where you go sometimes when you disappear from us. Um, what is your ethnic background? My ethnic background? Yeah. Well, my parents are from India. Right. They, uh, um, now, yeah. I, I, I don't know about you. I've heard, just me, I've heard, Indian parents usually have pretty high expectations for their children. Is that correct? <laughs> that is correct. That's correct, right? So there's some pressure, right? To make sure There is some pressure. You, that's true. There's some pressure. There's some pressure. Okay. I think your philosophy on basically, um, I, I think I told you before the episode that you are a walking microcosm of the, my leg hurts, so you punch somebody in the shoulder, but like, does it hurt now, motherfucker? Like, you did say that, yeah. You are a perfect combination of um, placing unrealistic expectations on yourself and crazy coked up irrational confidence. <laughs> I, I think you've nailed me. I think that's absolutely right. I think that's absolutely right. It explains a lot. <laughs> like the idea that I can, I can imagine you sitting there in your penthouse fucking apartment doing great in life, but like looking out towards the Potomac river and being like, I'm a little bitch. Cause I'm talking <laughs> right now. Fuck this shit. This is weakness. Weakness needs to leave my body. I need to do something about like it is ridiculous. I'm sure your algorithm is nothing but fucking Grant Cardone and fucking like <laughs> never heard of him, but, but, but I know where you're, where you're going. Gary v. You're not far <laughs> off, my guy. You're not far off. A lot of some Jordan, sprinkling some Jordan Peterson. Men do men things. They don't wait to think about these. Things. There, there were a couple of days is... listening to the Jordan Peterson a few years back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I get it. That was a fascinating individual. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's you are you are a walking example of toxic masculinity. If you can, I oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So, so I do need to. Okay, hold on. Let you know where it all started from. Okay. Right. Okay. Where's the Bible? <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> Healing back pain by Doctor John Sarno. Highly recommend reading it if you do have some back pain or even knee pain. So, for the longest time, audience, K dot, I had back pain i had knee pain and i had it for years and the back pain would come and go but the knee pain was constant for three years and so i would go to physical therapy i would get the occasional mri they would show me you know results and stuff like that and they would say yeah there are some tears here and there is some uh, cartilage deterioration so it may just end up being like this but also like the pain you're describing it doesn't necessarily match up with what we're seeing and i was like okay so i am bitch to your point i'm like all right cool this I'm is, sure that is not what happened. But right, this is nothing. It. Anyway, this is no, what that's you heard. <laughs> like, that, that. That might be what I heard. So you're right. You're right. That might be. That might be. Wah, 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 bitch. Wah, 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 from that wah. side of the screen <laughs> to this side, something crazy happened. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but but then I ended up reading this book. My dad recommended it to me. By the way, there so we go. To an extent, quite similar, <laughs> and it talks about emotional repression in the subconscious. And what it ends up doing is it chooses to produce physical pain in certain areas, common areas, back is the most common, um, to distract you from whatever uncomfortable thoughts or emotions you have. And so once that became clear to me, 
and the knee pain disappeared, K dot. I stopped wearing a knee sleeve during soccer, was able to play quick again, and the back pain also disappeared. Uh, yeah, it shifted it shifted my view on things a little bit. So here we are, the man you see before you today. Yeah, you, it's like you you're part Joe Rogan, part Aaron Rodgers. Rogers like ayahuasca, you like Coke, which just fucks up. The I, brain I did stay on the Rogers train a lot longer than other people <laughs> did. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <Left. It's> not- <laughs> Aaron does ayahuasca to get more in tune with what he's feeling. As far as, you just do coke to numb it. So, like, that's what makes it terrifying. But to be clear, it's that's the a train, not umit. Yeah, but, and I mean, it's not like the... <laughs> there's residual never done effect. coke. <laughs> there's need residual to be clear. Effect. Need to be clear. I'm never just done saying, when you're, when, when you're in the doctor's room, and I'm sure they're saying, Mr. Ahmed, you, you probably need surgery. We can totally understand why you're feeling this pain. And you're just like, ah, fucking weak bitch. I don't fucking know. And you just storm out of there. I think that what you're also coming to consideration and what you're realizing is like Coke numbs things. So like if you were living through life, probably really fucked up physically. Um, if you do enough Coke, you're probably just not going to feel it. And you match that with that irrational confidence you have and those um, severe, hard um, expectations of yourself. is a recipe of disaster. The, the, this, this is why like when you break your foot trying to play soccer and don't realize it oh that's what yeah. happens man this is just yeah, this is <laughs> it was i'm it, not be- gonna realize he's in trouble until he's in a full body fucking cast in a hospital and i'm sure when i come to visit it'll be like all right number one did you bring my coke and number two i'm being a little bitch here I, 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 in hospital. I, I don't feel shit so i was actually talking to my sister about this because i have a tendency to um create and walk towards nuclear situations and somehow survive and so we were like oh we're like cockroaches so i've nicknamed myself coach roach and i could teach you how to do exactly that which is get into a nuclear situation and somehow walk Matt, away alive hang on hang on, hang on. See, this this screams to me like early 20s <laughs> like it's just like, i'm working this, on it no, no, this, working is, on. this is not no this is this is this is you not this is you misplacing and misremembering what's happening. You okay. are walking into nuclear situations. You are absolutely being impacted by the nuclear situations. You just Ooh. don't allow yourself to be honest about what's happening because you won't allow. Okay, I do buy that. It. I do buy it's, that. It's like you're, okay. You're, well, that's like, interesting. <laughs> there are absolutely ramifications of doing everything you're doing. You just don't allow yourself to think about it. Yeah, keep running away, Amit. <laughs> like you, you got. Think- I think you might be right. <laughs> okay. Like, okay. Like, this have... is new. Everybody nowadays, there's this new thing about like how um Joe Rogan had it on his podcast. Because I still listen to Joe Rogan. But the um I've only listened to him once, by the way. I uh, he literally in the early days of Facebook, when you, you could like do a long bio like quotes and shit. Yeah. On there, if there's an archive, Joe Rogan is my hero was something I wrote a long time ago. He helped me with a he lot of stuff. First podcasters, right? He's he was early. He's uh, he was early okay. on, but like that was okay. back during like the market. Anyway, Marin sorry, I, I I wanted to rail. What were you saying? <clears throat> I know, I know. You you love to run. So like the, <laughs> but there's an idea that like I so I'm a believer in therapy. I I do therapy. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> the uh, <laughs> there there is this new thing that's kind of been brought up a lot recently, which is that um talking about your problems and staying and dwelling in your problems just begets more problems. It doesn't solve anything. So mm-hmm. there are a lot of people that are kind of pushing back to the idea of therapy or thinking that we're over-therapizing people in the sense of, yeah, you're just dwelling on the bad shit. I and buy when that. you dwell on the bad shit. So here's the thing. This is why anytime I hear somebody talk about this is when I know you don't go to therapy. <laughs> it's like it's the, the whole point of therapy is not to wallow in your shit. It's to acknowledge your shit. Right. And then work on it. Yeah. If you're staying in the wallowing standpoint, or that's what you think therapy is, that screams somebody that went to therapy for two sessions and then ran away from it Mm because they didn't want to think about the shit that they were doing, which is what a lot of people fucking do. But you have to acknowledge what's happening first. That that's fair. That's fair. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I'm reading. I'm reading a book right now, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. I, I'm sure a very popular book. I'm sure you shouldn't be you, reading it. You need the exact opposite. At least heard of it. No, but have you read it? 
I'm aware of the book. I have not read it. Okay, okay. So so when he says not giving a fuck, it it doesn't mean um it doesn't mean don't care about things. It's actually the opposite. It means care and you don't give a fuck about um about what it looks like from the outside. So he was talking oh, yeah. about for example, I think his his mom had run into some some problem with her neighbor or something like that or some associate. I can't recall the exact situation. Yeah. But he was like my don't give a fuck is not I'm just going to download a season of The Wire and not do anything. My don't give a fuck is we're going to take this bitch to court because they're messing with my mom and I don't give a fuck how it looks to others. So like you choose what you care about. It, it's a counterintuitive. It's no, really no, it makes all the sense in the world. It's, it's very, just, very fascinating. So I just wanted to at least explain what that meant because it does sound like the opposite, but it actually is quite, in, uh, I was quite like, enlightening. Every time I've ever like really made progress or done something or like even when I was a salesperson, yeah. When I would have crazy sales days was when you find that line of you're an autopilot. You're not overthinking anything. You're just doing. Mm. You give a fuck about what it is you're doing, but you're also not giving a fuck about Feels overthinking. Feels like you're describing in the zone. You're in rhythm. That's you're, what it is. You're in, in the zone. Being, you're in flow. And yeah. being in the zone is a, you, you have to have a little bit of carelessness to you. You yes. have to. Because the moment you overthink it, Get out. Get mm -hmm. out. You're chasing something. So, yeah, there's an art to this, but it's a balance. It's not an extreme like you do. Okay. Hold on. Make some assumptions. I think here. we had our hard stop, too. We did, but this is yeah. important. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold on. Um, because, because really, all I'm doing is shouting out the book one more time because um, one other thing, because I get Join stuck the in cult. life. I'm joking. Because <laughs> I, <'cause laughs> I get stuck in life, and I, I don't know about. I think a lot of people get stuck in life these days. Oh, no, you know, no. We have a lot of choice available to us, and it's easy to uh, want to keep the choices alive without committing to anything. Oh, yeah. Right? So, so like, I – that was quite the journaling session, by the way, last week when I wasn't feeling well. Acknowledging that I have issues with committing to literally anything was scary to even write down and then dive into. But – um one of the questions that he says we often ask is, what do you want out of life? And he's like, look, we all essentially want the same thing. It's just slightly different. We want to have made a lot of money. We want to be able to have the, you know, IG model fucking partner or just someone that looks really good. And like, you know, all, all this stuff. He's like, it's easy to say that stuff. But the better question is, what pain or struggle are you willing to go through in your life? Period. Not, not in terms of what you want, but what pain or struggle are you willing to go through? talking about pain as a constant, referring to the Buddha and what he discovered, right? And so if you know pain is a constant, what are you willing to choose? And from that, that can better inform what you do with your life. Okay, it's a fun book, man. It's it's a fun counterintuitive flip. Flip the question. It's cool. That's all I got. People, deal with your issues. Yes. Don't run. I agree. Feel and acknowledge your pain. And work on helping and treating it. It's true. You guys need to do that. Take it from me. Okay. It's Don't important. listen to anything he said. <laughs> but what if I said the same thing you did? Don't listen to me. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We'll talk to you later. Friday at 2 p.m. We'll see you. <laughs> All right. Uh, bye, everybody. Don't do drugs. In D.C., we're just hoping that you listen. Listen. <laughs>